Hey, this is Cece Summerfield, and we are live at the Farmer's Market today here in Ocean Beach with Tony Cohen. Hi. Tony, thanks for meeting with me today, and um, this is another episode of the Real San Diego podcast that I just started. Let's see right there. And I'm talking to you today because you have a new term that I want to learn about. But first off, tell us a little bit about yourself and your history with San Diego. How you, how'd you get here? Uh, witness protection program. <laughs> For sure. Okay, maybe not. Uh, I was in New York City. Mm-hmm. Fat, dumb, de- broke, broke, depressed, they're all connected. Living in a room about the size of this with no natural light and um, shed cold shower, no kitchen. And every morning, winter, mm-hmm. cold, dark, New York City winters, I go out and rush out to save a dollar on a bagel special and a crappy coffee and sit on my stoop thinking I was getting nature. Ooh, that's and rough. Go back inside and try and do some online work in my bed and just pass out lethargic. I had just nothing in the tank. Mm-hmm. And at night, I'd go down the block to the Mexican social club. My friend worked there, mm-hmm. uh, an Australian guy, and there's an English guy I knew from there. And they both just got back from L.A. at the same time, even though they didn't, weren't aware of it. Yeah. And one said, hey, you've been a good fit for Venice Beach. They both said, I'm thinking of get out of New York. You pile high in black snow. It's freezing. You've got seven layers on. It's just no fun. And it, it sucks you in. You don't realize it. It's like a vortex that sucks mm-hmm. you down. And next morning, I'm just like, i got to get out of here. Yeah. I was um, really the easy. I didn't admit it was a thing, but it's a thing. Seasonal affective disorder. If I have I, one, if I have one party there, I've got to put the yeah. special glasses on. I but, certainly agree with you. I mean, I have it. I, that's why I live in San Diego, because I We're not in I San get Diego, depressed. so that's over the bridge, right? <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Go there. Yeah. Um, and I literally just Googled where has the best year around weather on Earth. Because uh-huh. they were saying, Yo, you should go to Venice Beach, man. It's a good vi- fit for you. I've since been to Venice Beach. No, it's horrible. <laughs> no offense, but it's horrible. Yeah. So, best year around weather. And I figured, hey, you know what? This was February 2015. I knew it was getting towards the back end of winter. So I knew spring was coming. The spring in New York's okay. At least you're out and about. The year before, I tried to get out to go to Key West for the winter and go back to New York, and everything just went wrong in my life, and I just couldn't couldn't get there. Mm-hmm. This time, February, I committed. First week in December, 2015. No matter what's going on in my life, I'm taking a one-way trip. Magically, all the good stuff started happening as soon as I decided to get away. Uh, but I made that commitment because I just knew the winters were killing me. Yeah. Googled where has the best year-round weather on Earth, which is here. Mm-hmm. And didn't know anyone in L.A., didn't really know anyone here. I uh, had a business partner as a former Marine. I started looking. So I don't I don't drive. I just, like, everything's walkable. I'm looking at the size of San Diego. I'm like, shit. It's massive. It's massive. Yeah. So I, I speak with my uh, business partner, as he is now, wasn't back then, who was based here. And mm-hmm. I said, like, you know me. Where should I live? And he went, like, PB. Bird Rock, La Jolla. Yeah. Best spots in San Diego, right? Or, I'm sorry, not no. San Diego, but, you know, yeah. that's a whole other town over, the over there. Over the bridge. You yes. can keep them. Over the bridge. Yes. So, magically, all the good stuff started happening to me the minute I decided to get away. <laughs> However, I just made it work, made a commitment on mid-November 2015. Mm-hmm. He hits me up. So that he'd moved from here to Alaska. A uh, whole chain of events over six months all just happened very fast. And he hits me up saying, like, dude, I've got to pick up this custom Jeep from San Antonio, Texas, and get it to Alaska. Do you want to do a road trip? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm not meeting you in Texas because I can't stand the place. I've lived there. <laughs> so we meet in Phoenix, like, two weeks later. Literally, he gives me a date. I click on go, like, meet me in the airport. And mm-hmm. we do one night in Tempe, Arizona. This was amazing because I'd never been out west before. So mm-hmm. Coming down the eight with the the Valley of the Moon, mm-hmm. all those glow like the big stone globe things. Yeah, I'm like completely in awe. We're chasing a sunset going through the Valley of the Moon. I'm like, that's got to be spectacular. Ooh, yeah. This is cool. Yeah, and um, 
we're going to Dr. Matt's and stay in a cabana. I didn't even know what a cabana was. <laughs> the frigging cabana was like 3,000 square foot yeah, with a pool. That's and not a, a cabana. Oh, well, the big house was more. It's up in Poway on top of the hill. I'm oh, like, gotcha. Oh. Mm-hmm. And the next morning, like, let's go grab a burrito. I'm like, oh, okay, a burrito. I mean, I lived in Spanish Harlem. I don't know what a burrito is. I had a California breakfast burrito. I'm like, this is the best food I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I'm going to be hungry again in a week. But anyway, yeah. I'll eat it. Right. And um, we drove around. Drove down uh, Garnet, turned right onto Mission. This is December. Right about where Bearback is. And I just went, I said to him, I'm moving here. So I'll mm-hmm. show you the other areas. I'm like, no, I'm moving here. It was December, so it was Sleepy Beach Town. Mm-hmm. And drove up to Bird Rock around Camino del Costa. I'm looking at these houses. I like moved from a place this big. I'm just looking at houses going, holy shit, that's a lot of cleaning. Well, I'm not. <laughs> the money wasn't even the thing. I couldn't have afforded them at the time. Sure. It wasn't even the money. It was just like, that's a lot of cleaning. That's a lot of houses. We go up to La Jolla and like Ferrari and this and that. And you're like, oh, this is like the Upper West Side. Nah. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it actually isn't bad. I, I lived up there at one point. Mm-hmm. So... We finished this road trip up in Seattle. We were all over the place, did like three, three and a half thousand miles in eight days. We're in a coffee shop, the original Starbucks. We were also starting a coffee company at the same time. So we just like, you know, wow. plug it on in there as you do. Right. Did we talk about being social media whores the other day? <laughs> yes, we did. That's inappropriate. So I won't mention it on here. <laughs> um, and we sat there, he said, so what are you doing? We put the, we put this Jeep on the ferry or whatever, the boat to get it to Alaska. Mm-hmm. And he said, what are you doing? We went, well, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm going to the airport, I'm getting a flight to Alaska. I just get on the app, flight San Diego. I said, I'll share an Uber with you to the airport. And what have you done? I said, I've just moved to San Diego. He said, you're such a bitch, you know. I minimalized and downside my life to a U-Haul to go to Alaska. And you show up with a backpack and go, I've just moved across the country in like five minutes. And I get to the airport. In New York City, if you were to hit an Airbnb, someone's back to you within like 10 minutes. Yeah. I'm sat in the airport. No answer. No answer. No answer. It's nine o'clock at night. No answer. No answer. No answer. It's now about midnight, and, you know, building a business, so I'm watching my pennies. I'm like, well, I'm not going to spend $300 for, like, five hours in a hotel. Right. Won't be the first airport I've slept in. Right. Yeah. Not the last, either. <laughs> and about 11 o'clock in the morning, my phone starts pinging. All these Airbnbs I've been looking for, I guess they got out of bed. I didn't get it. Like, you know, I was warned, don't expect to get anything done fast when you go there. I'm like, it's no, slower I got this. Sure. Don't worry, I got yeah, this. It's yeah, very slow yeah I did. And um, did you know there's such a thing as OB time? I mean, have you gathered that yet? Like, this, uh, this is exactly where we started yeah. this late. Yeah. 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 Have I gathered, gathered that yet? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I have a special watch, see? Yeah, the one that doesn't exist. It, it's the one where you set up a meeting and both parties at the same time text saying, I'm running 15 behind. Uh-huh. Exactly. Exactly. At yeah. least. <laughs> and um, so I'm in this Airbnb for a month um, in PB and I'm just exploring. Mm-hmm. And then I get another Airbnb for a month. Just trying out bits of Pacific Beach. Sure. And I did that for a few months, and then March hits. No one warned me. It goes from sleepy beach town to complete... Spring break. Douchebag central. Yeah, in a spring night. break. I'm like, what am I doing here? So I'm on another road trip, business-wise. I just pack my bag and leave. And then... I'd already explored, walked around North PB. Just someone mm-hmm. told me, and I said, it's pretty cool, it's quieter. Mm-hmm. So on the way back, I just looked at a place in North PB, uh, got the top of a house, didn't realize it was a sublet, the house got seized. Yeah, got, this is an interesting story yeah. right there, but yeah. in short, basically... Inter- intervention, you... house got seized. Yeah. Um, I'd tell you I broke into the house to get my stuff out, but that would be illegal. <laughs> so, whatever. Yeah. Um, and back in, and it was also, ironically, it was Comic Con week. I didn't even know what it was. And it's like $400 for a couch for a night. I'm like, what the hell? Wow. So I end up in Mission Valley, staying at a friend's couch surfing for a few nights. Mm-hmm. Like, just don't go. I'm look, looking for a coffee shop in Mission Valley. I end up walking a PB for a coffee shop. Yeah. Starbucks That's is not, exactly. not a coffee shop, folks. All right. <laughs> you get sued for that, right? Yeah. Um, Waver, just joking. Just um, joking. And then 
I found this thing on um, Craigslist. Yeah. yeah. All I was looking for, it was round about now, so summertime. I'm thinking if I lease a place for a year, I don't want to be paying summer rates for a year. I'm going to see what the rates are in October and see if I can get something in advance. Mm -hmm. And I found this place. It was beautiful. Corner penthouse overlooking the ocean, Tumbling totally Surf Park on Craigslist. I'm going, well, that seems a little. That's sketchy as. Mm hmm. Oh, there's a phone number. So I just text the number thinking it was like an autoresponder. Guy gets right back to me. Yeah, let's meet. I've just lost a bunch of money on this place I was subletting. Yeah. I'm like, here we go. I'm going to meet some dude in a coffee shop, hang, hand over a bag of cash and see nothing. Where should we meet? He said, we'll come by the place. Really? Come by the place. It's exactly <laughs> what it said. 30 wow. seconds walk from the ocean. Wow. I went, you know, I'll take it. Yeah. But, oh, no. Everyone wants it. I'm interviewed. Oh. So I'm in being interviewed by a 27-year-old guy. I'm like, this is weird. And he says, do you have any references? Went, well, no. It's not me. I don't like, that's just not me. I said, like, let me see your Facebook. And about two weeks later, he hits me up. said, you look like a flight risk. And dude, I'm, I'm building a business. I'm all over the country. That's why I need a base sure. to work from. Sure. And... Um, off again an Airbnb then all of a sudden I look at my Airbnb reviews and I've got like 50 straight five star reviews oh, that's with nice. like amazing write-ups that's like great. things like if this guy shows up you're lucky to get him Shit. wow screenshot sent him all this stuff yeah and he said well you look like a flight risk but those good he said well if you pay a bigger deposit we'll do it that was supposed to be for six months three and a half years later I left mm -hmm. uh, got too comfortable same sure. sunset, same coffee shop, you know. I remember, same block. Yeah. yeah. So I remember saying to myself, I'm going to die in this building. They're going to end up dragging me out of here in decades. And when I said that, I went, all right, plateau, too comfortable. Yeah. Threw it out there to the world, you know, Facebook, the world, same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, thinking of moving. And people didn't get it. Like, you live in frigging paradise. Yeah. Too comfortable. And um, my business partner just happened to be in town with his wife and his kids and he went dude I saw your thing you should move to uh, Encinitas I went I'm not a freaking vegan you know that right? he went oh <laughs> dude you just don't get it man I went, no I don't get it no we got a house like on a beacons it's empty for three months and uh, I'm like it doesn't mean anything it's on Neptune it doesn't mean anything like, it's on the beach alright he said it's empty uh, do you want it went, yeah I'll go up there for three months see what it's like and this was late 2019 mm-hmm February 2020, I go to an event in Vegas, the last event ever at the Hard Rock. There was 2,000 of us there from all over the world, mm -hmm. hugging and kissing people from China and Italy and everywhere you shouldn't be doing it. None of us, <laughs> none of us got friggin' ill, ironically, <laughs> in a dirty old dusty Hard Rock, <laughs> which is now in revamped as the Virgin. Yeah. And came back, living on the beach, can't set foot out my yard to the beach because the beach is closed. And I'm like, this is bullshit. Wow. And where I was living there in Acadia, it's a mile and a half from the supermarket mm -hmm. and everything else was closed. I don't yeah. drive. Yeah. That's what I would have told you about North County. It's not very walkable when you're not on the west side at the, you know, by Seaside Market or something like that. Yeah. So. So I'm like, screw this. A friend of mine, she had a place on Mission Bay and a good friend of mine, and I was like commuting in Ubers and things through some like instructing and bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. And she just said, Hey, I rent my place out to travel nurses. Yes. They're not traveling. Mm -hmm. Do you want to stay at my place and just keep an eye on it? There's just this big ass house on the day. She said, I don't know, give me $500 a month. I'm like, yeah, sure, I can do that. She so, had some good friends with big houses. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. They don't, like, they lock the wine cellars when I show up and just say, <laughs> done, been there, done that one. Mm -hmm. um, and we just did that. And she she was in New York at the time, uh, interim CFO for, like, Fortune 500 companies. She had a, uh, what's it called, tiny house mm -hmm. in the compact. She loved the tiny house. Got a couple of dogs, just loved living in that. Yeah. So in the front house, there's a girl that almost got trapped in Hawaii. She's from New Zealand. She jumps in the front house in the other bedroom. And my, my other Israeli friend down the street, who's a chef, came over one night to cook. So four of us in this compound were just having the wildest parties ever. And then we figured out next door's four people were having the same parties and next door. So we just all opened the gates and just Aww. turned it into all this. And I knew 
This would have been March 2020. Mm -hmm. She said, like, you've got to be out by 4th of July. My parents are here for a golden wedding or whatever it was. So, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. cool. I'll find a place. And back then, there was all kinds of rackets going on in Airbnb. You'd book a place, they'd cancel on you. Oh, I'm having breathing difficulties. You'd try yes. and get your money back and yeah. then hold on to the money. I'm still old. It was rough it. on both sides, I'll be honest. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a frigging night. I book into a brand new renovated hotel and two days I'm booking for a month, pay up front. Two days mm -hmm. later, it becomes a homeless shelter. I'm just like... Dang. Uh, and it was a rough time. And someone suggested this girl who I thought I knew not going to go into that whole conversation. Yeah, we can keep that for another day. Yeah, we're not talking about that one. Yeah, it gets messy. Uh, sure, you know, I'm in Buffalo. I'm thinking of moving back. You know, I knew her face to face, not mm -hmm. Facebook. I said, would you consider OB? Because I've got a dog. And I'm just like, it's kind of sketchy, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's I, so funny you say that in 2020. I mean, when I moved here in 1998, it was sketchy. Well, I came so, here in, I guess the first time would have been about 2016. And it mm -hmm. was when the market was the other way around. Yeah. And I'm walking down the sidewalk, it's all in clothes. I have massive claustrophobia. Uh, and I'm like, I'm going to get robbed that. here. And it's a great gloomy day. And I end up at the wall. I'm like, oh, never come back here again. Yeah. And um, I literally walked down from PB every day and walked up and down every street. I walked up the hill once, not doing mm -hmm. that again. Walked up and down every street between Sunset Cliffs and the ocean from mm -hmm. West Point Loma right down to the bottom of the Sunset Cliffs, looking mm -hmm. for street signs. I know how it works in beach communities. Sure. And uh, she found something online, Craigslist, I went to see it. it wasn't ideal, but it got me here. Mm -hmm. just, I said, all I want to do is unpack a bag. Right. Right, I've just been moving around. Right. And I just said, well, it's not permanent. It just gets me in. If I like it, then I'll sure. figure it out from there. And um, uh, then just through people I've met here, got, well, you've been to my house. Got a really cool house here. That yeah. No one knows where it is unless you know where it is. Can't That's see right. it. Can't see it. Can't get in. Yep. Secret sauce. And, uh, it's very secluded. It's, it's now looking like Jumanji level seven. So I started gardening and I was warned about <laughs> be careful and passion flowers. I got this. Oh, they Succulents. love. Succulents. I got this. They like, love San Diego. I've got a they farm going on there. Oh, I should, have planted, I should have planted weed. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't right. say that. <laughs> that grows well too. Um, here I am. So here you are in OB. And since you've been here, you've really come out into the community and really made I didn't, your... I didn't come out. That's a rumor. I mean, I know it was Pride Week and all. That's not what I meant. I mean that uh, you really have shown yourself to the community as far as being a, well, you termed it, you coined the term community activist versus activist. So tell me about like what what drives you to be such a big part of the community and like activate or being a, a hacktivist? So I'll tell you something you may not know. My first connection here was mm -hmm. Joe at the business center. Oh, okay. And um, connect with her on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew bartenders and things because they work all over the place. Yeah. And I saw a post when she first got put on the uh, OBMA, OBMA board, board thanking mm -hmm. everyone. Oh, yeah. And I sent everyone a friend request. You're the only person that responded. Really? Yeah. So you were my first real connection here that you don't know that. I didn't know that. Wow. And I've been here about 10 months. So this is all you... We can wait for the blender to stop running. Yeah. Is it loud? A bit. Yeah. My sound guy is telling me to time out for a second. Okay. All right. Back to it. So, you've been here for about 10 months. So, I decided I like it. And I've lived all over the world. Southeast Asia, Europe, Canada, mm -hmm. around the States, like you name it. Mm -hmm. Probably 30 to 50 different places. Wow. That's impressive. I remember when I first came to San Diego. So, I'm here, December 2015. Mm -hmm. I fly out for a week of speaking gigs in New York. Went for a week. After two days, I'm like, I'm done. And then my buddy says, the Yankees will leave New York before you do. <laughs> and I'm just like, here I am. I went back for a week, two days in, I'm like, I can't stand this Can't place. stand it. Still. Just the, the white noise. It's yeah. too much. Yeah. It's a lot. And I, I came back here. As soon as the doors open in the airport and that warm breeze hits you, I just went, Oh, even though it was Airbnb. I feel that, way, that same way every time I come back here, even when I'm just visiting Northern California, which is where I grew up. 
I come back here and like, oh, thank God I'm back, you know? So my, about it, it felt like home. Mm-hmm. And there's lots of different bits of San Diego. And for me, walking, it's got to be by the ocean. Yeah. And then I, I came here and really um, got the community. Mm-hmm. And honestly, i, I got to tell you this, if you're watching, um, unless you live here, see, people talk about communities all the time. Unless you live here, are you, are you for the you're yeah. going to get it. Right. It's I've lived all over the world. Oh, my community, my community. No, I ain't going to get it. It's just so welcoming. And probably about eight, ten months in, I go and see Joe. I said, you know what? I want to contribute. I like this place. I've got a few things that need help with. I want to contribute. I said, I'm not writing a check. Like, I want to contribute time-wise. Mm-hmm. Time flexible. My business is time flexible. Mm-hmm. So she said, go to the OBMA, ask for Tracy and Kristen, and they'll find something for you to do with the OB vibe. So in my mind, I'm going, right, I'm going to flip some burgers, drink some Grigio, <laughs> talk to some surfer chicks. As soon as I walk in, I get, yeah, we know who you are. You're clearing out the plaza at four in the morning. I'm like, I, that's not what I volunteered for. <laughs> oh, no, we allocate. Okay. Start, like, Who's doing this with me? Well, including you? Uh, well, well, yeah. Go find someone to help. All right. So that was my first thing. What people don't realize is, and that was the first event back for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. What people don't realize, back then, there's a lot of stuff needs doing at four in the morning. Yes, sir. Now, because I've been that consistent face, mm-hmm. We may have to do the when Mama passed now because of the plane. These are just the unique things that happen in OB. You know, someone asked me, I've been here about four weeks, and I said, what's an OB pause? (laughs) You didn't notice? Is it when you stand by the ocean and wait for the green flash? I mean, no. (laughs) For the plane's coming over, shut the fuck up. (laughs) Oh, Oh, now I get it. Anyways. um, (laughs) We do that. And then I kind of, from my previous experience, inoculation is better than, better than cure. So, like, if you know you don't want the vendors there, don't have them show up in the day and get all pissed off at you. Talk to them nicely on Wednesday and say, hey, you know, you can be here on Saturday. No, sin, you can't. You just got to pay the same as everyone else. Well, how yeah. much is it? Well, it's whatever it was. $300. Yeah. Well, we can't afford it. Well, Sorry. Well, you can't be here, but everyone's got to pay the same. You understand yeah, that, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, like, let's take the day off. Come down and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. The homeless situation there, the first event, mm-hmm. and now like I've got to know the voices in that. And mm-hmm. I, like a few days before, I say, just let the guys know if they want to lay in on Saturday morning to move it up like two or three blocks. Because there's no laying in. They're going to get a, if they want to get up at four o'clock, they're welcome to stay there. Sure. But four o'clock, we got to do the thing. Yeah. And it's kind of become a thing. So it's actually pretty seamless now. You know? He volunteered for one event. Just Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And um Especially if you're good at it. Well I'm like under the radar. I was. Yeah. And I think that time has passed on you, I'm sorry. I, yes, that's passed. you've become public now. <laughs> and well the other thing was, um I grew up in a very uh in a gang culture yeah, I- in the city in the Western world with the highest violent crime rate. People don't realize that, Manchester, England. Uh, street crime. I grew up around gangs and this, that, and the other. I'm going into details on that. Mm-hmm. So I identified certain things, and I saw something uh, one day that was posted about all this gang graffiti, and there'd been, like, a stabbing at night, and this, that, and the other. I do remember that. And I saw it. I didn't really know who... But I recognized, like how it lays out mm-hmm. and what i know is you've got to nip that in the bud like instantly mm-hmm. so like this graffiti over graffiti and then you got to walk and it's just gonna just you snowball got, you literally have 48 hours yeah i got a, a friend of mine he's a, a something in the gangbanger unit for the sdpd mm-hmm. i just sent him the pictures directly i said do you know what's going on in ob no one's reported those and that's what's going on mm-hmm. and he said well we're on it that's mm-hmm. all I'm giving you on that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we had the gangbang unit down here undercover for a couple of weeks. We spoke with him since. He said, well, they're not here at the moment. They're a little bit north of here. Doesn't mean they won't come back, but just sure. keeping the loop. 
you know, it's not seamless, but it's the, the graffiti thing seems to have got a grip. And I then I took it upon much, myself, really. like, well, I've got rid of, and I would do it in the middle of the day, whether these mm -hmm. people do it at night, I just got the black can and just spray this shit out in front mm -hmm. of everyone in the middle of the day, I don't care. Mm. Like, just to make a statement. And I'm like, you know what, this whole town could do this. Mm -hmm. All the bits of graffiti. Mm -hmm. I just got a black can. Anything of graffiti was black. So for two or three months, it was just black paint everywhere. Someone went into the OBMA to complain about it. He was a guy that I thought was a friend. Hmm. And uh, he said, it's not up to you to do this. It's the city that has to do this. We need more cops. We need this. Otherwise, it clearly doesn't work. Well, you shouldn't be doing this. And he starts going on and said, who's giving you permission? No one's giving you permission. Mm -hmm. Well, who knows you're doing it? I said, well, the OBMA knows I'm doing it. Who's the OBMA? I said, how long have you lived here? Like 13 years. And you don't know who the OBMA is. And they're on your block. That tells mm -hmm. me about your level of contribution. He went in to complain about me, ranting hmm. and raving. Well, somebody's got to do something, and we can't always just wait on the police or the city to do something about it. I mean, if we waited for the city, we'd all be like 100 well, years old. Well, Sorry. What was Sorry, happening. city, but, uh, you know. That's what was it's... happening. So he went ranting and raving, mm -hmm. coming across as a lawyer. And then when I went in, he said, like, oh, I think your friend was in here. Well, let me guess. And I dropped his name. I mean, yeah, he was talking about, you know, the vendor ordinance and this, that, and the other. I said, you know, he failed the bar exam twice, right? He's a barroom lawyer. He's not a lawyer. And she went, I knew it. I knew it. Typical. I said, he's a dick. So I got him out of my life. Someone local reported me because it was a, someone made a video of me spraying. Mm -hmm. But from the side, mm -hmm. so he couldn't actually see I was doing a cover up. Mm -hmm. Someone sent that to the police. It ended up at the gangbang unit. The gangbang unit calls me and said, you're not going to believe this. You've been reported for tagging. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> And then, um, you know, I'm trying to do this stuff somewhat under the radar. I mean, it's, it's yeah. tough when you're out here every day. Sure. And um, he said, we don't care. We know what you're doing. Right. He said, but you might just get some rookie cop that wants to make a name for himself yeah. and you're going to get busted. Yeah. So I went to the office and I, I just can't do this anymore. I'm like, pops up on the radar. Yeah. So they made me a member of the OBMA and, um, you know, I'll get the occasional text. Hey, can you take a look at this thing? And it will be graffiti somewhere in this area. And sure. Take care of it. Sure. We've gone, we, I was going through 10 aerosol cans a week. Wow. Uh, I just bought my first, I didn't buy them actually, they, they fund them now. Mm -hmm. uh, first two in two months. I got mm. three months. I got this week. So I've gone from so 10 it's a week. coming down. It's not, it's pretty it's much non-existent now. Non-existent. That's amazing. So, you know, it's that. Everyone knows the broken window theory, Rudy Giuliani. I lived in New York and saw it unfold. Mm -hmm. I also, when what's his name took over, the Diazio, I saw it go backwards fast as well. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at. And I just kind of took it upon myself to do stuff. Because mm -hmm. um, I love living here. And, you know. You want to enjoy the beach. Want to enjoy the beach. This, the farmer's it? market. Yeah. So your question there. The difference between activist and hacktivist. Yep, that was what I was going to to ask next. So all my businesses involve hacking, not computer hacking, hacking, but cheat systems, bypassing, find a way, mm -hmm. find a quicker, faster way. The so-called activists that are on Neighborhood Watch, the big difference between Neighborhood Do and Neighborhood Watch. Sure. What did you do? Well, I sent this thing to get it done. Oh, mazel tov. So mm -hmm. you did frigging nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to do this, we want to do that. You know what? Every time I ask for volunteers, not a single person showed up in a year, apart from personal friends of mine who were called and said, hey, I need a favor at four o'clock in the morning. Because mm -hmm. some of that stuff, you just don't, you don't do this stuff without someone with you. So if something sure, does go wrong, course. there's always a witness. Yeah. And, um, you know, Chip, you know, mm -hmm. Paul, I think you know, just come, hey, I need a favor. Mm -hmm. Always there. So when we're doing this thing, we're doing this thing, and we're doing this thing, I mean, you're not doing anything. You're sat on your ass. In all fairness, the last two years, mm -hmm. and this depends on your own personal point of view on it, I ignore it, um, but the last two years has made people stay at home and hide behind Zoom. So two years ago, people said, have you discovered this Zoom app? I was coaching on that shit seven years ago. I'm done with it. Like, mm -hmm. I ran a business through it mm -hmm. years ago. Sure. And now... People use this Zoom excuse. We have town council events here. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't get there. We live within three square miles. How can you not get there? <laughs> I'm busy. We're all busy. It's a Zoom excuse. Mm -hmm. And it's too easy to use. And people, a great deal of people, 
over the last couple of years have kind of changed the perspective on showing up. Uh, in all fairness, there's a group of people that do show up, so we're doing some stuff right now with the town council, mm-hmm. uh, forming new committees. So people who actually want to show up and contribute, strength in numbers. And the analogy I give is, let's say you've got four homeless guys on this side sure. with dogs and this and the other, and you're a mom pushing your prop on your own, you're old, you're mm-hmm. not going to say anything. Right. Because there's, why stir something up that you don't know if you can get out there. of? Yeah. What if there's a hundred of us on the street all doing something? The four yeah. people are going to disappear. Right. Strength in numbers. So right. that's what I'm working. I'm not going to go into it here. That's a whole different thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, world's biggest OB clinic there. Yes. It's, you're going to love this. No, I'm I'm it's, ready, it's and you know whole, I'm involved. It's a whole day of it. Oh, you're involved. Yeah. It's a whole you day. let me know what you need, Tony. You know we'll that. do it. You know what we could do? A whole podcast in one day. Yeah. Just for put sure. it together, and literally, you know, I'm from that. Easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. Sure. Ready, fire, aim. Hey, I'm just going to get on with it, and it's not going to be to everyone's face. I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Again, I, if you waited to please everybody, you would never get anything done. So I don't want to please thing. people that don't do anything. Right. I want exactly. them to either and wake up or watch. I, I, exactly. I appreciate your action mode versus... So the activism in- yeah. is finding a cheat system. Uh... We sent all these things into the SDPD and nothing happened. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm going to speak to someone from the PD. I think we both know who that is. Yep. And I'm going to circumnavigate the system, and they're going to give me a circumnavigation tool to get things to the right place that covers their ass. Because, mm-hmm. you know, there's a protocol involved. Of course. You know, certain yeah. things. Send me this with this, that, and the other, and it will go straight to the department. We've had people here that have been causing problems for months, arrested within less than a week. Because I'm just serving that mm-hmm. to hack the system. And that applies to everything. Yeah. Um, you know, whatever it is, we'll just make it work. We'll just make it work. Covering up your feet. We'll just, we'll just do I'm asking for permission. Sure. And um, that is... Um, I'm certainly glad that you found us here in OB and joined the community and uh, are doing taking us in a positive direction and... Uh, so we can all enjoy the beach, of course. It's not just me. We're, we're building a frigging army here. Yeah, that's good. That's good. There, there are people here in this town that actually want to contribute, uh-huh. that are positive, that want to actually show up and do stuff. Mm-hmm. And they're, a lot of the time, they're very disjointed from each other. and They don't know where to go and they don't have any direction. So consequently, sure. not a lot's happening. Right. Nervousness. You know, you occasionally see people here with a picker-upper and a bucket, just yep. cigarette butts yep. on their own. Yeah. Or these disjointed uh, clean-up campaigns that are cleaning up the beach mm-hmm. the day after someone else cleaned up the beach. Gotcha, yeah. Or the clean-up campaigns that are like, look at me, I've got a cigarette butt. They pat themselves on the back, they take a selfie for their Instagram, they drop the cigarette butt and they're in happy hour. But I did promote my business through that. I look so good. Like, mm-hmm. screw that. I'm done with this. Yeah. Like, you want, show up. You want to be for real and yeah. you want to have a joint effort with Yeah, collaborative effort. So my, my yeah. vision... Collaboration. This year is one day we're going to have 250 people on this street on one day, all day, mm-hmm. all wearing orange T-shirts. That's all I'm giving you on it right now. Okay. So imagine this. You live here. You've not been here for three months. You're driving down Ingram, whatever it is. You're driving in. You see the Welcome to OB sign. And you see some people on orange T-shirts and they're planting things in the media. Oh, that's nice. And you turn right onto West Point Loma. And you see four people, and one, two of them have got pickers and they're picking up garbage, and one's got spray cans and they're covering graffiti, bits of graffiti, and mm-hmm. one's got a crop spray killing weeds. And you turn left onto Bacon, and you look up every alley and every street, and there's four people, and every one of them doing the same thing. You get somewhere like Luigi's. Mm-hmm. You can't park, there's 100 people in orange t shirts having breakfast there, getting ready to go. Getting ready to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're doing like two hours, I'm going to sneak Two hour you. shifts. No, we're just doing all two hours. So you've okay. got 250 people on the street for two hours. Two hours. Yep. You can't avoid orange t-shirts. So you're no. like, you're with your family. Screw it, I'm going down to Sunset Cliffs. And you go to Sunset Cliffs and there's people picking up garbage with your orange t-shirts. You're like, jeez, I can't get rid of these people. Yeah. And you come back down. By the way, I've not approved anything for any of these businesses. And you go <laughs> to, I don't know, the brewery. Yeah. And there's three levels in a beer garden. Everyone in there has got an orange t-shirt. Yeah. Like, what's going on here? Right. That's the vision. That's my And every, everywhere you go in, it's like, hey, if you, uh, these businesses are not very really happy with me. You got to, 
dirty boots and like, mm-hmm. hey, free wings if you got an orange t-shirt on mm-hmm. or whatever it may be. Sorry, Shawnee, but you nailed. <laughs> um, and then you got your family like something's going on in this town. Something's yeah. going on in this town. Yeah. And you take your kids down to the plaza and it's like there's a movie going on for kids and mm-hmm. half the kids have got orange t-shirts and the other half don't. Mm-hmm. The ones that don't, you can't buy the t-shirts, by the way. You cannot buy the t-shirts. The ones that don't are going to drive their parents freaking nuts. Yeah. Why don't I have an orange t-shirt? <laughs> Next month, we do another one, not as big, but mm-hmm. we'll do a monthly collaboration thing. So the whole thing we're doing with the town council is trying to become a hub for the cleanups and all the rest yes. of it. So we're not overlapping and all these disjointed groups yeah. are all collaboratively. Hey, we've got 10 people, right? Well, this hasn't been done for a month. Go mm-hmm. to XYZ. Because, right. you know, the beach looks great. No one cleans the alleys. Or yes. places like Voltaire gets overlooked. Yep. Or uh, what's it called? Loma Avenue, whatever it's called. Loma Avenue, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're so, right. We focus mainly down here and the yeah, beach. It looks better on Instagram. So. Look at me. I'm doing a great job. No, you're at happy hour right now. <laughs> so I have an event coming up at the end of the month, too. And you were talking about uh, clearing people out without making a map. And so I may need to have your help on July 30th because we are going to do a movie in the in the at the beach at Veterans Park. Okay. So um, I don't really think we need the park like super early, but we do have it reserved with a special events permit all day. Right. So I guess I'm going to plan on getting down there kind of on the early side, but I don't know. Maybe letting people know that if they could, you know, clear out by dark. Well, with it, you've got to um, you've got to do literally 4 a.m. You just have and to you, get down here. Yeah, board. and you've okay. got to let them know a few days before, and there's a way of doing it. Okay. And also, because I've been doing it for a year now, like, they know me, so yeah. it's a case of someone you mentioned the other day. Mm-hmm. That guy knows me. Yeah. Uh, and, like, whenever I say, hey, oh, sorry, Tom, yeah, yeah, good, I'll wrap it now. And so it's, I'm, mutual I'm not, respect there. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not an asshole to him. I'm just, like, told some, like, human beings. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you're in that situation, there's a couple of reasons. You might just be down on your luck. Mm-hmm. You might be doing it by choice, drop mm-hmm. out musician or artist or something. Mm-hmm. You may have issues, be it pharmaceutical mental issues, mm-hmm. or you may just be have alcohol and recreational drug issues, sure. you call it. So, you know, we tell them all with the same brushes. It's just knowing how to deal with it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, happy to support. Some of you need. Some of you need. Thank you. Thank you. I will for certain. Um, so you got all this stuff going on with the community. Where do you find time to work your actual business? Like, you know, and tell us a little bit about your business. It's time flexible. So I'll tell you something else. Okay. People don't know what my business is. I'm not here to plug a business because that would be counterintuitive to what I'm talking about. So I'm I'm trying to introduce altruism. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people here that will do stuff for this town. Mm-hmm. But they'll show up in their company T-shirts, mm-hmm. and like ten of them in company T-shirts. You mean like the thing I'm doing right now? Yeah. Just a couple of... <laughs> I uh, will be altruistic in the fact that I am marketing my businesses. I have the real uh, real San Diego podcast, yeah. and my also hey, my real is, estate business. Hey, this is your gig, and this is my gig. And, and now uh, we're gonna. And some of them are just it's all, they're, they're doing stuff, but the the end game is to promote their business. Sure. I'm not about that. So, mm. you know, people think my business is instructing craft like that. It's yeah. not. Right. It, I've done it for, shit, four decades. Mm-hmm. I got out of it. Someone, one of my former students, moved here the same time as I did, unbeknownst to either of us. Mm-hmm. And then she opened up that she was in an abusive relationship at the time. Mm. And we're having coffee and there's no, I'm just having coffee with her, playing catch up. And sure. she just... She looked at me and said, you know, you changed the way I see the world in just one three-hour course. Wow. There's thousands of women need your help. Yes. Can you help? And yeah. she leans in and does that on me. I'm like, like how do you say no? <laughs> drag me back in. Yeah. So I agreed to do one three-hour course a year ago. Yeah. I'm now booked up still. <laughs> After training eight new instructors, I'm still booked up, like, I don't know, till late September or something. I but I only do a couple of hours a week with that. And, and that. And my main business, which is, we'll just call it biotech, ketone yeah. technologies, yeah. not diets. Screw that shit. Um, <laughs> my main business is time flexible. So I get to bed early, wake mm-hmm. up at three, four o'clock. I don't even get out of bed. Just I do, do everything, everything off the phone. phone. Do, just do everything off the iPhone. Like I don't even know if the computer works, the laptop. It's not been open for three years. Um, 
<laughs> do everything from that, mm-hmm. get it done. I, I'm just like become same thing happy, but time efficient. Yeah. People are going to the gym. I don't know if you've seen these videos. I've got this uh, sort of Mark Pro. It's a uh, tens machine. A oh, high, high yeah. Intensity I saw you machine. do one on the. On so the, I can do a full workout. A video. In bed for an hour. Well, like chest day, and all of a sudden it's, the videos are like. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm doing other stuff, but that's going. I'm also, yeah. I've got like meditation stuff in, or I'm listening to music. So I just make it fit, time efficiency. Because we live in this world now where, you know, if the last two years have taught people anything, like most people don't need to go to an office. No. I said this years ago. Yeah. I did a video about five or six years ago on Mission Bay saying, calling the, the coming com- commercial real estate crash. I was called out as not knowing what I was talking about. I said, we don't need to be in an office. Right. You don't need to stand around and work. Well, people don't go to the office, they won't work. No. That no. Depends. I really feel like it depends on the person because I truly feel like I get more done at my office when I'm not running around in the field and stuff. But um, my you house... You work with cool people. Yeah, I work with cool people. Yeah. But also my house is full of, well, was full of boys. And they were, you know, once they were home, it was like, mom, That's your mom, mom. It brings all the boys so, to the yard, right? That, yeah, right. So it's called two kids and it's just, and it's running a household on top of working. And so, you know, when they were in school, it was after two o'clock. I was, if I stayed home, it was done. You know, there was just no way I could get away from their needs. So that was what made it so convenient to have a small. I have a boutique office. We're not talking like a big office, yeah, you know. No. So I think it's your office. It's not like the I, big. I may, I may have yeah. drunk some boxes of wine there. Yes, boxes of wine. We don't talk one about that, right? Yes. Yeah. What happens in my office stays in the yeah. office. Unless there's a video, of it, Carl. <laughs> uh, unless there's a video of it, didn't happen. Right, right, right. So, yeah. So uh, I agree with you, though. I mean, there's a lot of people that more, are more efficient from home. Well, if you think about this, you know. Say, OB out the equation. If you mm. live in somewhere, not just America, the Western world, you spend an hour in the traffic to go to an office or a factory, yeah. predominantly an office really, and you're already stressed by the time you get there and you're not efficient because you're stressed out, mm-hmm. this, that, and the other. So you go to the water cooler to have a conversation about some bullshit that happened last night. Right, and vent then about everything in the you traffic. You waste time yeah. and you shuffle papers around. There was something I, I think it's the CEO of WeWork, it might be another company, said so the biggest challenge with um, corporations right now mm-hmm. is hybrid working. You're allocating 10 hours to someone to do a job. They're doing it in two hours. Oh. You've no idea because they're doing it like really time blocking. Yeah. Kids are not there. They're not on their emails. They're working on whatever they're working out. Turn the phone off. Get it done. Yeah. Hey, I've got all this time. So I, I kind of work like that. I've been doing it for years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I'll message people. Every single day, I just message people, just have a conversation. Or it might be the birth there. Just say, oh, mm-hmm. it's not business, it's just a quick hello. Mm-hmm. And like, my question is always, what's new and exciting? Oh, not much. <laughs> <laughs> well, same find shit, something. Same shit, different, different day. day. What's new with you? And I go like, well, I'm doing this thing, and I'm putting this project together, and I'm doing this thing. Oh, when we do this thing, we raise some money for the CCS, <laughs> for the women's safety seminars. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Oh, this is happening, and we've got this event we've put it together, and there's like ten different things, and mm-hmm. it's the same thing. How do you find the time? Well, we all have the same amount of time. It's what you do with it. Yeah, right. Like you know, my son who's staying here at the moment. What are you doing today? I'm working. When's your day off? I said, Well, the last one was May 2015. <laughs> I work seven days a week. However, I don't work like other people. Right. So this is technically work. I'm mm-hmm. Not getting paid for this yet. Gotta wait till uh, I get some sponsors. <laughs> oh, I just heard that word. Um, <laughs> but no, it's it's all... We, we live in a society now. If you've read any Malcolm Gladwell. So, your Mal- tipping point, Outliers, highly recommended. I have heard the, about the book Outliers. I just gotta find the time to read it. Do you have any other excuses? Just that one. You heard of Audible? Yes, I know. I have Audible, too. I have a ton of books that are stacked that I need to do. Oh, I'm, and I need yeah. to... I'm 50 behind, but yeah. someone recommends yeah, yeah, a book yeah. and I just throw it in there. Yeah. I'll get to them. So Malcolm Gladwell. And I'm pretty sure it was outliers. It may have been the tipping point. And he said in the 21st century, there's three types of people. Salespeople who are redundant. Mm-hmm. Mavens, Yiddish word basically means specialist. You're always going to need them, but they're very niche. Mm-hmm. And that can apply to whatever the cookie people are making something or whatever it may be someone came up with that mm-hmm. in connectors 
And he said, the powerhouse of the 21st century is the connectors. Yeah. The people putting the dots together. Yes. Now, and here's something I've done a lot of coaching on. If you're connecting people to get something out of it, mm -hmm. well, if I connect CC with Dave, there's something in it for me. It doesn't work. Yeah, it's not the right purpose. It's, you know, something Corey said. Do you think there's some, such a thing as true altruism? Mm -hmm. No, but there's different levels of it. Mm -hmm. Just connect people together. Fine. Fine. Just go what's in for you. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. But you know what? If someone needs something and it just so happens to be that I'm in that space, yeah. you know what? There's a chance it'll come my way. I'm not looking for it. Right. Like my business Same is frigging 95% inbound. Mm -hmm. Hey, I saw this thing. I remember this post. I did, 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 did. Mm -hmm. Someone told me to reach out to you. Yeah. You know why? Oh, cool. That's exactly how my business runs too. And that's, yeah, and I, I see your inbound. stuff. Yeah. So. Where just being out there, mm -hmm. and by being out there, so, well, I put a post up. I was at. Um, uh, I'm not going to plug them on here. I was at a place here, mm -hmm. and it's by the roundabout. Okay. Yeah. By the roundabout. And I saw a, and I, I've seen this place, I don't even know what it was. Mm -hmm. And I saw a, uh, I think it was like a Facebook story. And I think they'd done like, someone done a quick one minute professional looking video. Yeah. And I commented like, oh, that looks really cool. And they responded, come visit. Sure. <laughs> the place is the back of frigging beyond. I never go up there. Sure. I went there today and as I'm walking over there, I'm thinking, and I've had this conversation with people over the last 10 years, especially if you're in the food industry, the bar industry, uh -huh. people rest on the laurels. This place has a terrible location, literally it's as far away as you can get. Yep. It's not far, but in this town it's far. If you're walking all the time, yeah, yeah. it's far. It's across town. It's across town. It's mm -hmm. like Northern California. It's like a mile away. <laughs> it's a whole mile away. It's a whole different country, passport and everything. They speak Canadian a mile of the street, whatever that is. <laughs> And uh, I was telling you the story. I went there because of the Facebook story. Mm. There's people on this street, busiest strip of all, yeah. this block, busiest strip of all, yeah. that are friggin' empty right now. Because they're just expecting people to walk in the door. They're not connecting. You have they to are connect. not utilizing. Oh, we have a girl and she posts something. No, you got to do it every single friggin' day. You know this. I've seen your videos. If you've got a business, you have to contract someone, employ someone that's mm -hmm. a specialist or someone that knows, like you, mm -hmm. how to do it. Yep. I'm not talking about influencers. Most influencers are broke as shit. There's a guy here who's got videos that have had 50 million views. Really? That's a present. And he was actually asking, asking people for gas money last week. Oh, no. Influencers are influencers. They're not impactors. Yeah. So, oh, I put this post up, great. I had 300 likes, great. I had 50 comments, great. What did you do? Well, I got all that. That's what did you do? Right. You engaged? No did you talk to anyone? Yeah. This guy got me in his place because he's someone, whether it was him or somebody else, mm -hmm. responded to, come on in. Oh, well, you know. And I looked at the menu and went, oh. Yeah. I, looked, I looked through the melts, yeah. show up today, have the tuna melt, I'm like, hey, I'll be back here. Sounds yummy. Even though it's like the other side of the world. For way me, over way there. Way half a mile over there. Way over there. Um, and there's people just like, oh, it'll be fine. And that, now my mind is, okay, that's good. Um, sounds terrible, this. I'm going, okay, I'm going to buy this business next year for 10 cents on the dollar when it's done. Oh. Sounds terrible, I know. You know, you can't make you people do can't things. can't be a secret. You have to put yourself out there and you have But to. also you let them know. Yes. Like, let people know and like, also look, your place is empty. Yeah. Your place yeah. is empty. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I'm just like, sometimes I have to do, sorry. Sometimes I have to do this. Because <laughs> I'm looking at the business and I know the dots to connect. Mm -hmm. and it's not my business. So I'm just going to and sometimes I'll give ideas and I'm like, no, you know what? I'm just going to step back from you. Mm -hmm. It's not my business. i got enough going on. You uh, you certainly do, but it is a push. I mean, I'm sure people are appreciative of your input because you seem to have a lot of inspiring ideas, to be honest. I mean, you're on a couple of committees with me, including the promotion committee with Ocean Beach Main Street. 
And, uh, you come in and you just like, Hey, I got an idea. And it's always something new and something we haven't really discussed. I, I like the new input. Thank you. I appreciate that. Something I was told years ago by my, my business partner, Brian, we're in a, mm-hmm. one of our meetings up in Louisville, Kentucky. And there's a bunch, there's probably 40 of us in the world, in, not in the world, in the room. And there's a bunch of people that like their own voices. Mm-hmm. And I said something, and I got a text in the same room from Brian. that said, people will listen to you more when you speak less. And that resonated. That was about six years ago. That's a good point. There's people just blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And there's no frigging substance coming right. out. Right. But if you, you know, that whole thing, two Open ears, one yourself. mouth. Yeah. Like yesterday with yourself and Dave. Yeah. I'm just sat there listening and something popped in and it might be based on an experience of a similar situation somewhere else. I'm like, mm-hmm. hey, and I do interrupt conversations and you know that. <laughs> it's popped in my head. It's got to come out my mouth at this point. Right, right. And then I'll sit back and be quiet for a while, which is hard for me. It's not easy. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's like the promo committee. Mm-hmm. That's great to sort of sit on the sidelines like, oh, this is really cool to see how these things roll out. Yes. Or the, what was the other one? Street Fair. To see how stuff rolls out. Yeah. And now and again, you might just have like, oh, what about that? Yeah. Yeah. Throw it out there. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll wrap this up now because I think we could go on for hours, honestly, Tony. We could um, go talking for about hours. different stuff around OB and all that. But uh, let me just tell you again how much I really, really appreciate you being part of this community and coming in and meeting with me today, too, just to talk about what's happening and, and your community hacktivism. Yeah. I love it. If you sat on the couch in your mom's basement, that's, that's not. not community <laughs> activism. That's nope. neighborhood watch. Yeah. Cool. Well, right. thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate the invite. Yep. We're not plugging business here. At not all. at all. Not at all. No. We work here. Nothing's <laughs> going on. Thanks again. Thank See you guys. Thanks for watching.